Hello everybody, so I just stopped recording a previous video and I am currently uploading it, but the main reason I did that is because um, now I'm making this video and it's just to provide you with a quick tutorial on how I go through and um, get the STL files, how I go through and um, extract them, set them up on my printer, okay? So um, first and foremost, you got, just kind of got to choose wherever you go to um, to get the file that you want to get, right? In this case, what I want is this particular file, which is just this... Um, a cool looking sword. Um, what you gotta do, go into download STL, select the files and I'll download it for you, right? Now, I already have it downloaded, so I'm gonna go ahead and open it in another folder. This is where my um, downloads are at, right? Now, if you look at this right here, this folder is zipped, right? So what that means is if you try to um, open it, right? And then design over it, color it or whatever, it won't save. Um, all you're doing is creating, as far as I understand it, a instance where the actual, um, uh, what is that called? An instance where the actual file is able to be used, but as soon as that instance is over, the file it just, for all intents and purposes, it disappears. So, now that I got that, we're going to go over here to 3D printed files. That's usually why I extract them, you know? Um, you want to have a place where you're extracting the 3D printed files too. Um, and in this case, it's a file on my desktop and it just it's just called 3D, 3D files. Now, um, what I saved it to is that new, new folder. And I'm not entirely sure why it's not showing. Eh? No, uh, hang on. Let's see. Pause. Okay, and I'm back. Um, we were doing the sword, right? So we're gonna go over here. We're gonna go back over here because for whatever reason right now, even though I extracted it, it just didn't go through. Extract all, browse, select, select, extract. All right, so I'm gonna blade. this we're going to open that 3d printed files sovereign blade back lab sovereign blade mm, okay that's actually really really tight um okay so last when i stopped um I had to go somewhere to go check something out real quick, but now, now that we're here, um, what I can do is, so we're going to go into slice, right? And this is generally where you would kind of like, um, uh, set your settings. Um, cause right now, so when you do a slice, right, when you're slicing the file, what ends up happening is that the computer is going through and generating, um, like the path that the printer will follow, um, in order to print your file. Now, one of the things that um, disrupts that sl that slice process, as you can kind of see right now, it's generating walls. It's like at 15%, I'm gonna stop it. Um, when you see something like that, um, one of the things that stops it other than just closing it is changing any kind of settings on this. Um, right now, I'm gonna go for the 1.6M optimal. And then for the support, um, I'm going to go to enable support and then on build plate only, and we're gonna go tree auto. So what that does is when there's an overhang, if the plastic is too um, uh, hot or wet for the lack of a better word, um, what can happen is that your, um, when it has an overhang, right? So instead of like, let's say printing out straight, it'll start drooping. And that drooping, the way that you stop it is by adding in a support. And what I did is I added in a support using like a little tree design that's gonna be generated automatically by the computer. Um, you can design your own supports. You can actually add them in um, by yourself. Like uh, you can put, uh, where is it? Uh, threshold angle advanced, the limit for supports. There, uh, I'll look for the, the actual setting because um, it's almost done generating and I don't want to have to regenerate it um, and then remember like the when you generate something anything that's being generated it's going to um, 
the colors that you see here are not necessarily the colors that you're going to get, right? And what I mean by that is, oh yeah, see, this is going to take like two days. And this is what I mean about like, um, like high quality stuff. Like this is going to take a really long time, but by the time it's done and it's a sword and I can show it to you guys, it's going to be pretty fucking sweet. Um, but yeah, like the actual, this, this here, like all of that, like it's not necessarily, um, I sh it's not necessarily going to be the bronze color, right? Because in my filaments right now, I have two printers that are available. So I'm going to obviously use one of them for this. So I'm actually going to use my bamboo, um, the smaller one. Actually, I lied. So we got red, white, green, and I believe that's multi color. So what we're going to do, we're going to print the plates and we're going to go with faith. Ah, uh, see, so this is actually something that I really found really difficult to deal with, especially when I first started. Um, I designed myself some 3D, or not 3D, but some, like, business cards, right, for the company. And because the business card um, that I downloaded the file, when I downloaded the file, it was, it kept on saying this. And I'm like, well, why is, doesn't it want to go through? It's a 3D printer. Like, what do you mean it's not going to work? If you look at this, it says the select printer X1 carbon is incompatible with the chosen printer profile in the slicer A1. Now, I didn't know what that meant and I didn't really know how to fix that until I started exploring and like dealing with these, right? So what you have to do is you have to actually go into printer. Now, don't select this. You're gonna select this right here, the Bamboo Lab. And you see how it says A1? We're gonna switch it over to X1 carbon point for a nozzle. And then um, it's asking you right here. So it's asking, hey, do you want to keep on using the values that you had? And I'm going to say, yeah, because I changed them for a reason. I needed support in those um, areas here with the overhangs because I'm actually pretty nervous that they won't um, print out properly, right? And yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's just um, a lot of it's clicking, um, especially if you're not designing your own stuff. It's a lot easier. Um, and eventually I'll get into designing my own things, but right now, like I said, I actually need to sell. Like, I, I need to produce funds because while I have a lot of um, materials to print with, right, I, I literally have, a, I think, like $500 worth of materials, uh, like filament to print with, right? The problem is is that there's still bills to pay. I have to pay for internet, I have to pay for um, rent and electricity, you know? So as much as I would love to kind of just continue experimenting right now, I have to sell. And by using the optimal settings and by adding in those trees, that guarantees that the print is a lot less likely to fail because of something that I did incorrectly, you know? And yeah, I mean, uh, I think that they, the, one of the biggest things I really like about the 3D printers is you can print articulated things, right? So a lot of the time, um, when you create, like, let's say you, you, um, uh, hmm, let's say bones, right? Like the material for bones, the way that it grows, it grows organically. And that's why it joints it so, so nicely, you know, like you, you literally have, um, cells that are destroying your bones and, um, another cells that are, um, regenerating that lost bone. Um, and in nature, you see a lot of different configurations that are very um, strange, right? Um, but they're efficient because it's literally like a survival tool that was developed over millions of years. Um, sometimes you can't really do that with metal. Sometimes you can't really do that with plastic, at least not easily. But this 3D printer takes a lot of the effort I would have to integrate into designing something of this nature. Um, casting it, um, getting to that point where I have a physical object that I can sell to a person and they, that person liking it is a lot harder than if I were to just be like, oh, okay, like, let me set up a couple of files. Let me leave this for 20 hours, two hours, three hours, well, however long it's going to take. And then I can proceed. Yeah. All right. So we want the blade to be white and we want this to be green. No, I want that red. I want you green. No, white. Red and white. No. You know what? Let's go for red and white. I feel like that's a decent color for now. So we're going to hit send. 
and I didn't really customize anything else. Um, I can, you know, I, I really can. Uh, but right now, because of the, the purpose of this video, it's supposed to be a tutorial. It's supposed to kind of give you a generalized idea of how I go through. I get the file, I load it into the um, Bamboo app, I change the settings to fit a quality that I like. I showed you how to add in the trees um, so that you don't have drooping when it comes to like hang hangovers. And um, yeah, we're just starting. I just checked the 3D printer out I got up to see like what colors I got in there so I can select the colors. Um, yeah, um, I think even other videos like I'll be doing is what I'll be doing is like I'll be like oh okay um, let me calibrate and I'll show you how I calibrate the 3d printers and bear in mind my method of calibration might not be the best but if you find something better then just type it in you know um, I think we're all just kind of trying to learn because this tech is so new in terms of actually um, oh yeah look look uh, not fake patience because I think I feel patience is the one that's making a lot of noise right now there you go see and and if you look at this I just like that line right there I just like that I'm not entirely sure why that's cropping up but I just like that line I might have to um, investigate it and then here this is why I ran out, uh, out of white filaments and I switched over to the um, yellow um, the nice thing about the yellow one is it glows in the dark so I'm, I'm pretty excited to see how that kind of turns out uh, yeah all right, um, thanks for watching. Sorry for like that little bit of weirdness where I had to pause the video. So there was just something happening around me that I had to take care of. Um, and yeah, that's about it, guys. Um, take care, be safe, and I will see you next time. Bye. Oh yeah, leave a like if you liked it. Leave a dislike if you don't. Subscribe if you can.